Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I am back hopping with Altenew. Be sure to have checked out the hop that we had last week as well, um, or a couple of weeks ago, in regards to showing you some quick and easy ways to stretch supplies you probably already have, um, or you can use those new Altenew supplies to make some really, really cool um, turn the sentiments into backgrounds, how to snip out dyes, how to emboss with pigment inks. We did lots and lots of different things in there and how to make kind of stamps look translucent too. So lots and lots of fun ideas in there. But today I want to show you the new release here. Now there is also some mixed media inks which I'll be using in another video. So be sure that you've hit subscribe and rung, rung the bell uh, so that you get notifications of when that video is available. But this is the alphabet stencil that I used for this card here, so I'll show you how to do this. This is their feathery stencil, which I used on this one here. So this was just two shades. Uh, it was the uh, Aqualicious and the Teal Cove, and I'm gonna combine them together. And then for this one, I used the Geometric Landscape stencil, and I used Hydrangea and Ultraviolet on there. And again, I'm gonna show you how to use a couple of colors just to add some extra dimension into your pieces. You'll also notice there's some enamel dots on here. There's four new colors. We have warm and cozy for our oranges, our tropical forest greens, our shades of purple, and our seashore, which I used on my cards. So I also want to show you how I created these two. These are my first two ever slimline cards. You can see that it's one piece that I ended up trimming up and I used these new uh, creative cutouts. This is the nested wreath. They're also releasing this one here, which is Moroccan mosaic. Uh, you'll notice, I think this is either a die or a stamp or a stencil from Altenew. And you could use these as a stencil first and then create a project with what's left. Um, lots and lots of different ways to use them, but I'm gonna show you how I created these as well. So a couple of quick and easy cards, and then this one took me a little bit longer, but it was really fun to do. And you can see there how it kind of comes together. So let's start this one first because it takes a little bit longer. So I started with a piece of the nested wreath. Now in here you get uh, nine pieces and they are laser cut. So they have lots and lots of detail in them here. And you can see I have small ones, mid-sized ones, large ones. I actually took a large one and it would be great for a scrapbook page. You can see they're a really nice big size. And I just trimmed it in to four. So I just kind of picked arbitrary points. One, two, and I did have to do it in two goes, so I'll just do one go with you, and then I went back and I did the other half of my wreath. And then when I was done, I just trimmed all the pieces, um, I cut, uh, I drew out a circle, cut that in half so I had the two card bases, and then basically built my wreath and pulled them apart. So you can see I had little bits coming off the top. These will all stand up too if you want them to. The thanks, again, is that trick I showed you in the last video of cutting out this thanks here and just trimming off the circle. It's really easy to do, and it's a way to stretch your die. So you can have that big kind of statement piece or that it's done with black cardstock. And then at the end, you might be able to see, I did the whole thing with the Altenew Iridescent Spray. So I'm gonna be using uh, some of their sprays today, but this is the Iridescent Spray. And that's what I used for uh, the kind of the all over effects. So my white went really nice and iridescent, as did my black. So it just kind of gave the whole card a little bit of pop. So to do this, it was really, really simple. I'm gonna be using some warm sunshine, some frayed leaf, some uh, forest glade, and some antique gold. Now these are the Altenew ink sprays because I haven't yet got the mixed media sprays, so I'll be doing a video as soon as I get those. Um, I'm gonna just give these a good shape. They have a metal ball in them because they have um, some metallic mica. And I'm going round and round in circles rather than up and down because you don't want to clog your nozzle with, um, with that mica. So you really want to store these ideally on their side. I'm just trying to disturb some of that mica in the bottom. And then you want to shake round and round. And I'll also show you a tip at the end as to how I keep mine clean and spraying every single time I want to use them. So I'm just loosening up that ball first. But again, you'll see I'm not going up and down, I'm going around and around or just kind of bang it on this way. You don't wanna go up and down this way. And then we'll do this one. And now we're ready to go. So I started with some warm sunshine because all kind of leaves have a little bit of yellow to them. And while it's wet, I worked with all the colors 
to clean your sprays, turn them upside down, spray into your splat box, into a trash can, whatever you'd like to, to do, and then just take a kitchen towel, wipe off the nozzle, and then they'll be ready to spray next time. Then I went in with a little bit of frayed leaf, which is the lighter green. And same thing, spray it upside down, give it a wipe. And that's literally all you have to do is you want to empty out that nozzle so it doesn't clog. Um, I just go from there. So now I'm using my darker shade of green, a little bit less, clean it out again. And then finally, I went in with a little bit of antique gold. Um, you might want to do this when it's dry. You might want to still do it when it's wet. But it just kind of adds a little bit of uh, magic to your colors. It's empty. And we'll wipe that off. Then I waited, did all four, turned them over, did them again. And then you're going to want to wait for them to dry. Now, it did take a little bit of time for them to dry. So I did kind of go in my heat gun and things. But that's literally as easy as it is to t alter and turn these cutouts into something beautiful. And I'll show you some more ideas with the media inks in another video. So if you've hit subscribe and hit that bell, you'll know when we're going to have that video come out. Now, I'm going to show you how I created a couple of these stencil cards because they're really, really quick and easy. This, I'm gonna show you how to create this. This little line here is a piece of cardstock. I trimmed off the black here um, and I just put it on here and a little enamel dot to really kind of highlight the high. Now, how did I do that? I took this stencil, which is one of the new stencils for this release. You can see there's another idea on the back of using Hello. And I'm gonna turn this over, make sure my high is somewhere fairly prominent. And I like to tape my uh, card to my stencil. Normally I like using purple tape, but I've run out. So I'm just using some regular masking tape here. And we're going to stick this down onto here. Super easy. So the first thing we wanna do is take our color. And I'm gonna use Mountain Mist, which is my lightest color that I used on this piece here. And I like using a blending brush. I'm guessing I had some green left on my um, on my brush, but just add some extra tones and things. So it's whatever you want your base color to be, you can pick that out. And you want to make sure you get a nice even application. I'm using a reasonably light color so that it really kind of pops against the dark. And then once you've gone all over, let's move this out of the way, we'll go for the, uh, the dark green here as we ended up with green. Now I'm gonna take some masking tape and I'm gonna mask off my high. So we're gonna add tape across here, up here. And you can see I'm just going around. So I'm really just masking off the area that I want it to kind of accept ink to. And that's why I like using a smaller brush for this technique because then you don't get so much kind of overrun. And then we're gonna go back over just this bit. And these are the Ultinew dye inks. They come in a cube form or they come in larger pads. And that's it. So we'll just lift this off. You can see that. So that's how I got my high. It's really, really easy. And you don't even have to move the alphabet around, which I love. Then to do this one here. So this is the geometric landscape and the same I used here on the feathery. We're gonna do something similar, but we're gonna use two shades again, just to add a little bit of depth and dimension to our project. So again, I'm gonna take my cardstock and I'm gonna tape it to my stencil. And the reason I do this, normally I like to use pixie spray. Again, kind of got a little bit low on that, but um, the reason I do it this way is once I turn this around, now I can move this anywhere I want, which I find that really nice to be able to move things around. I'm just gonna check if there's anything on my brush. There's not, so let's pick out these lovely teal colors. So this is uh, Aqualicious, possibly. It is. So you can always just test it on the side too. And I'm gonna give it just a really kind of light dusting. Just 
just like this. And then we work in circular uh, pieces like this. And then we're going to go in with our teal cave. Like so. And I'm just going to add it in certain areas. So I might have a little bit that's darker up here. I'm going to soften and have a little bit darker around here. So I'm not going to add it everywhere. And then when I lift this off, you can see that you've got just some really nice kind of depth and dimension to adding things to your card. And I used the uh, Mega Label Love from their last release that I used in some cards there as well. And I stamped that out with the uh, Obsidian Pigment Ink and I heat dried it. I didn't add any embossing powder to it this time and then kind of embellished with some little enamel dots. So I hope you found some tips and tricks in there to make some really easy cards. If you want to spend a bit more time and do something a bit more mixed media -y, you can totally do that as well. But I loved kind of trying out out those uh, slimline cards and some fun things. Don't forget to check out all the hop information below. There's prizes, giveaways, um, codes, so much inspiration from everyone. So go check all that info out below and I'll see you again very, very soon in another video. So be sure that you've hit subscribe and rung the bell and I'll see you soon. Happy crafting. Bye.